Economic growth is the goal of nearly every government in the world. In its simplest terms, growth means that more money is spent in an economy every year. But there is a problem with this. The reality is that over the past 30 years in the developed world, wages have not grown quickly enough for people to have more money to spend. Because of this, governments have not been able to raise enough taxes to support greater levels of spending. This should have caused the economy to stop growing, but it didn't. Instead, people, companies and governments have kept on spending by borrowing money from all over the world and relying on high-risk investments. As a result, the economy has continued to grow, but it has been based on ever-increasing levels of debt. The most common measure for the wealth and development of a country is gross domestic product, or GDP. GDP is the total value of everything we make and everything we spend. For households, this could be buying a television, a computer, food and clothes. And for companies, this means buying office materials, resources such as steel for production, energy, and services including telephones and deliveries. And for governments, they have to run hospitals and schools, provide security and a clean environment. Their job is to make sure that the basic needs of society are met. In today's world, the higher the GDP, the greater the wealth of the nation. The way our economies work now is we measure progress in terms of GDP, which really just measures the financial flows of the economy. It doesn't measure all the other important things, like the way we use resources. Everybody talks about growth, but how can you have continued growth on a finite planet? Finite planets basically force you to start rethinking the way we're going. The way we are going at the moment is to use more and more materials and energy and resources and water and everything else. The problem with GDP is that it doesn't include the value of important things such as the free services that nature gives us. Clean air and water, pollination of plants and crops, wild animals or voluntary work, looking after elderly people. Another problem with GDP is that it does not include the costs to society of environmental pollution from the production of chemicals, energy and materials, or the dumping of waste and the overuse of resources. The GDP model was created at a time when economists didn't know the limits of nature's ability to support human activity. But we're now pushing up against those natural limits. GDP is short-sighted because it counts the depletion and degradation of our natural wealth as if it were economic gain. But it is not a gain, it's actually a loss. If a country were to cut down all its forests, GDP would grow because GDP only counts the timber value of the forests once they're cut and sold at market. Our standing forests have immense value, protecting wildlife and a rich biodiversity, providing clean water, preserving soils, preventing landslides, minimizing carbon emissions into the atmosphere, and so much more. But because these values to society are invisible within GDP, it's not a surprise that the world has accumulated a massive ecological debt that doesn't appear in any country's national accounts. There are so many examples of this absurdity. The more fossil fuels we burn, the more greenhouse gases we emit. Then the more GDP grows, and therefore, according to conventional economic dogma, the better off we are supposed to be. I come from a metal trading background, and it's quite interesting to look at how the market works, because there is a physical market with trade of physical metal that is handled. But beside there, there is a metal market called paper metal. It is possible for a bank and I do know some examples, to sell forward paper gold for supply later much more than there exists on this planet. What it leads to is financial bubbles. We sell things that don't exist. Now, this has been known to happen in gold and silver. 
but it is not limited to that. The same thing has happened in lead, in nickel, in aluminium, in grain, in coffee. And this distorts the markets, it corrupts the price mechanisms, and it makes the markets less efficient. Prices are meant to be a good signal for us what to do and what not to do. At present, there is no price on destroying nature. So if someone has a mine and just digging into it and taking out what is there, he does not pay for destruction that he causes. When it comes to our use of natural resources, it seems that nobody is paying attention. This is a problem because we are using up natural resources faster than they can regenerate themselves. So we are building up an environmental debt. It is now clear just how unsustainable our use of resources has become. And to make matters worse, we continue to increase our resource use as every year the global population increases by about 70 million people. The United Nations has concluded that if current population and consumption trends continue, by the 2030s, we will need the equivalent of two planets to support us. <laughs>